Now, unless we're just doing all technological difficulty stuff here. And look at you. What's, a, what's, this, what's this occasion? This occasion right here? Well, so our guest today challenged me to dress better than Don. So you want to see this? Look at this. <laughs> I'll show you. Let's see. You can't we got get this. That. We got suspenders in here. We got it all. We got, got it all. This you got the 10 piece suit. We sure do. Look at Sharp, sure. Scott. All right. You going out on town tonight? Of course I am. All right. You think this is my only gig, Don? What are you, you a, are you a, a wedding singer? No, I'm not a wedding singer, no. That is not what I am. I am not. All right, so it is 7 o'clock, sir. Are you going to karaoke? Karaoke? <laughs> what? Wow. You're karaoke. What about the Frank Sinatra of karaoke? <laughs> really? Jeez. All right, so 7 o'clock, you ready? I'm Scott. I'm Don. And we're, we're talking, talking real estate. estate. All right, so Don, we got a great show for you today, folks. Absolutely. It's going to be crazy, okay? We got all kinds of new things happening. We have an absolute whirlwind of real estate coming in. Katie Chuber, she's been in the industry for years. She is going to ta talk your socks off. It's going to be awesome, all right? Uh, we have a new executive producer, Dan Chuber's in the house. He's in charge of making sure all the things get fluffed and all that good stuff, you know, like the other kind of flicks that are out there. So we got all kinds of good things happening. And if uh, anything looks wrong, email Dan at Dan. At Dan gmail.com. At, no, at DanTalkingRealEstate.com. <laughs> go right there. That's where you're going to go with it. Absolutely. So, um, Don, let's talk. Give me, give me with the show rundown a little bit, would you? All right. So, first of all, question of the week of the day is, if you could buy a vacation rental home, would you do it? So, would you do it? Okay. Now, here's what we got different for you this week. The question of the day, the best answer is going to get... Our sponsored gift from Root Brothers Coffee. Okay, Root Brothers Coffee. We got a couple things in here. We got some wonderful artesian coffee. We've got some Costa Rican honey coffee. That sounds right. good. We've got a Root Brothers mug, and we got some chocolate that may not make it into your bag. So I don't know if it will make it into your bag or not. So the best answer from today will get Root Brothers coffee. That's so they have, we'll... they have chocolate around your mouth earlier today. Was that from that? Yes. No. Uh, <laughs> no. Right. If the Root so Brothers are watching, to... if anybody from that, that, in that place is watching, I did not eat the chocolate. We kept it in the fridge. And it's all nice and cool. So that's that. All right. How many bars were there? Uh, that I can't tell you. That I can't tell. So all right. So give us the rundown, will you? All right. So, of course, uh, market update. We're going to talk about what's going on in the market. The topic is, this week is, what's the deal with my deposit? How do we work with earnest money deposits from a buyer's perspective and from the seller's perspective? City Spotlight, Allen Park, Michigan. Our interview, you've already know all that, Katie, our fan of the show, and then our going to sum it all up and take it home for, uh, I guess, the rest of the evening. It's going to be crazy. So You're going to dance your way out, right? Yeah, you're darn right. I might dance Kitty out of here. You don't know. You don't know what's going to happen next. It's going to be awesome. All right, so let's get into it. All right. So market let's update. talk market update, folks. Market update. This is one of the part that affects you the most. Let me uh, throw a couple things out there first. Yes, Joanne Osborne, this is a bow tie. Yes, it is. Again, I was challenged by our guest to outdress Don. I think I did a little better did he do today. Did it? A little bit better today, so I think we did a little bit better, but we'll we'll let you decide. So market update. Let's talk about rates. Rates are still. I've heard Don. I've heard below three, but now I'm starting to hear. I was talking to somebody today, and they said they had a 15 that was like two and a half, two and a quarter. Wow. Like that's ridiculous. Like that's like a, a little bitty car loan or something like that. Yeah, yeah. That that that's awesome for that person. Yeah. They can really pay that mortgage down, that principal down, and. So it's a great time to buy, yes, it is a great time to buy. Something you want to be aware of, though, is that if we're flooding the market because it's a great time to buy, lots of people out there, so you got to be willing to do what's appropriate, what's right. necessary. I, I, new buyers that come into the market, here's what I have to explain to them, that, that you're going to pay probably 5 to 15 over. I mean, that's going to happen over list price, right? If, if you like a house, if it's moving ready, um, you're going to have to pull out some appraisal guarantee action, right? And it's really hard for people to swallow. Yeah. It is, but sure. it's the market that we're in. If you want the low interest rate and you want a house that's moving ready, that's where you got to go. Yeah. Right? And that's what's driving. A couple of things are driving the, the, the market is the supply is down, demand's high, and interest rates are extremely low. Yeah. So it's, you got the, the perfect storm for a very competitive market. And maybe you know for the sellers, it's great. 
buying's a little bit more tougher. I mean, I tell you another little thing I was talking to people about too is some folks are coming in going, well, we've got to think about selling and going moving in with in-law so-and-so. I mean, that might not be a bad move. Right. Is sell, we're, we're going to get the most maximum dollar for your home, and then if you can stomach your in-laws or, or different people, you can deal with them, okay, then maybe buy in the fall, winter, or when things kind of calm down a little bit. Yeah, but, it, but will it, though? That's the whole thing. That's well, the question, you know? So I heard feds are not, again, this is depend. it could change in November, okay? But I heard they're not raising rates, so they're not talking about it until 2021. Yeah. Right? So, so you that kind of blows with the wind, but again, so your market update is, is the rates are down, um, but you have to be ready to do what's necessary to buy your home. Yep. Selling, I, you can almost throw a get, number against the wall and see what happens. Yeah. So that's that's how that goes. And appraisal, they're coming in for the most part, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so yeah. So, so talking about that for uh, the market updating buyers. The next up, the topic of what's deal with my deposit. We can talk about that a little bit on how that might be able to sweeten up the absolutely off their offer and maybe get a get a house. Absolutely, I agree a hundred percent. So, this topic comes up quite a lot. It's been coming up quite often lately. Okay, earnest money, and so our topic today is you know what's the deal with my deposit. Right. You know, so, a lot of people think the earnest money, they don't understand what the earnest money deposit is, yeah. either from the person, the, the buyer side or the seller side. Yeah. And the buyer always thinks that they can lose it easily and the seller thinks they're going to get it easily. And it's not really the case, is it? No. And folks, again, we're going to give you the honest scoop, okay? A lot of agents are going to are going to kind of finesse this a little away, but that's not what we're doing here. We're going to give you the real the reality of earnest money. So our, that, our experience, yeah, you know, yeah, it actually yeah, happens on absolutely. a day-to-day -day basis. So, all right, so what is an earnest money deposit? It's an earnest money deposit to, from the buyer to show the seller that you're, you're negotiating in good faith, that you want to purchase their home, and it secures the property for you to do your inspections, your appraisal, and go through the mortgage process to get the money to close on the house. Yeah, absolutely. It's, I mean, and it come in any form, right? It could be a check, can be cashier's check. I've seen wires, and the funny thing with wires is wires go in style and they go out of style. Wires go all the time. We want money wire. Well, no, we don't wire for it. They, they yeah. Isn't that weird? Yeah, it, it is. It's like okay, yeah. cashier check wire. They bounce back and forth. Sometimes it's like this. Sometimes it's like that. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. so that's definitely. I had a closing today, and they wanted the wire funds wired from the buyer for the down payment for the down payment, mortgage costs, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So you see those. Did they wire it? Well, there's a little issue with that. So, but. He's going to, yeah. See what he said? Little issue of wire issue. I like <laughs> cashier's checks. I tell you, See, if, if, most of the time it comes you to take that. Anyway, you want know? to hear a good story about an EMD? So I was selling my, my grandmother's house in East Dearborn, and it was an Arabic gentleman, and he was buying it for his daughter. So I said, maybe in my office and bring that earnest money deposit. So he comes in. He's got like a pair of shorts on and like a, one of those white uh, G-string t-shirts, you know. And he comes in with a bag. Of cash, I go. Whoa, 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 man! I go. No, 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 no! I need a check or a wire or something. He goes, oh, okay. But at first, he was just gonna hand me a bunch yeah. of cash. I'd have been in Vegas. Boom! You know what I mean? <laughs> but that's what you're not supposed to do. Yeah, yeah, so, definitely. Uh, that's definitely not what right, you're supposed so, to do. So, so next question on, on so earnest money is how so, much earnest money is enough? Right. When when's enough? So. And this is kind of a hot topic now. I, I always think, like, we always talk about, I get out in the morning, about eight in the morning with a, some high end agents from the area, and we talk about what big things are, you know, impeding or making things happen, right? So, how much is enough? Typically, it's supposed to be about 1%. Okay, so if it's like $100,000, it's a, it's a grand. If it's, you know, 150, it's 1500, and stuff like that. But there's kind of like this new undercurrent with agents that we're going to make a big deposit. Right, but I always look at it as deposit, and we're going to talk about this later. It's it's hard to take somebody's earnest money. It really yeah. it's not it's, it's hard, not easy. It's hard to lose your money. But it's here's the kind of here's business. the here's the, the discussion we had today a little bit was non-refundable EMD. Yeah. So you better hope that house is nice and doesn't have any inspection issues. Non-refundable EMD. That's so non-refundable for any purpose. If that seller accepts that offer and they don't purchase that home for any reason, private inspection. Um, mortgage law don't can't get approved for the mortgage they lose their deposit that's what it sounds like I mean maybe inspection would be the only thing but that not a refundable because it's it's like it's like saying the the private inspection is for informational purposes only you know what I mean it's like saying something like that right it's kind of right. like you gotta go uh, right. You know? right that's kind of risky how do you feel about that I, you better you better know what you're looking at 
You yeah. better know what you, I mean, you better be able to look at that house and not, and not have any hidden stuff that you didn't know. Like, there better not be, like, water damage in the attic you didn't see or something like that because you'd be screwed. So, if you, you representing the purchaser, would you recommend that, that way of purchasing a home? It comes down to how bad they want that house. Like, if people are, if they're, like, it's the greatest house in the history of their life, and they want it with, no matter what, that might be one of those, you know, the big accelerators on, on the list there. So, it's very important to uh, express, express to them in detail the risk of yeah. doing that yep. in that going in that manner. Because that, 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 that turns this whole thing on its head. Like we're gonna explain to you about when you get your earnest money back in that, but that kind of turns this whole deal on its head. Yeah. That, that by itself. So, so it's typically really, it's one percent. Typically it's yeah. one of this. Yeah. So it's really good for the seller in that regards if it's a non refundable deposit. Wow. Yeah, it's like a no it's all one sided for the most part. Between that and the appraisal gap coverage it's like a no brain. Like they can just go, that's the number I want, that's how it is. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's gonna work out. So yeah. all right. So where did, where does the earnest money go to? It goes to the to the agent, the broker, and they have to hold it in a non escrow bearing account. Yeah. So every no, once it, in a while, every once in a while you see title company hold it. Every once yeah, in a while, yeah, that's weird. Strange, yeah. 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 That's kind of I mean like having it in the buyer's agent brokerage is kind of like that's typical. Yeah. It's very typical. Yeah. 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 And it, that money does not leave the escrow account until either you close the home or there's some resolution on how that money's gonna be divided or split or re who it's gonna be returned to between the seller and the buyer. Yeah. The real estate company, the title companies, everybody else is out, of the buyer and seller are in the middle of that. Right, 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 yeah, it's pretty easy stuff. Now, so let's talk about when I can get my earnest money back. This is, this is the part where, again, the honest truth is it's really, really hard to, get, to take somebody's earnest money. Yeah. Like I had a guy, I'll be honest with you, but. Unless one, it's not refundable. Yeah, 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 right, that's true, true. So one time I had a guy lose half his earnest money, and he was calling me driving to the closing and said he couldn't close. Driving to the closing, he lost half his earnest money then. That's the only time they ever lost any earnest money. Yeah, ever. wow, yeah. Yeah, that's unusual, that's extremely yeah. unusual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's your, your ways that you, you, you get your earnest money back, okay? If you have a private inspection you're dissatisfied with, earnest money can come back to you, okay? Um, if the appraisal comes in low, all bets are off, money can come back to you, right? Um, if the mortgage company won't finance you, and that's kind of like a... You don't get denied. That's kind of, yeah, that's kind of like a dirty trick, too, if you, if you really wanted to get out of something. If the mortgage guy denies you, he's like, you want me to deny Yeah, whatever. but you have to, it has to be legitimate. They're, yeah. They're, 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 they're there, something has to happen for that to really actually happen. You, yeah. You're not, yeah. you get a letter from a... From a mortgage rep saying they, they were denied because they don't want to go through with it anymore. They have to have either bad credit or something changed in something their, got, something in that was their application. Well, yeah. now, yeah. The employment, right? Employment's a huge thing now. Right. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And the last thing is some other contingency wasn't satisfied. Like if you said you had to sell your, your departure home to, to, to satisfy. I'll tell you which one I came across. A young lady uh, messaged me on Facebook uh, this week and she said, you know, I'm in, a, I'm in this situation and said, uh, we were supposed to be able to review our HOA agreement with the condo, and we had 10 days. It was continued on the 10-day review of it, and they were almost like to close almost. You know? So that little contingency got them their earnest money back. So why didn't they close? What was the, the house was somewhere they didn't like the house or whatever. There was something changed. Yeah, something changed. Something was different about what the, they, they used that as their yeah, route. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, again, earnest money is hard to take. It can be done. It can happen. Yeah. You know, but it's and, and the other part too is if you're trying to go after somebody's earnest money, it ties the house up, does a bunch of other stuff too. Right. From a seller's perspective, people just want to move on and get to the next thing. Right. And if you if you're a seller to get a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars and keep your house off the market, because you have to really break that contract. You have to that contract has to be dissolved before you can move on to another contract. Yeah. So to do that, you have to be released from the previous contract. Absolutely. So, absolutely. So. Last one. Give us the last bit of that. How do you protect your earnest money deposit? Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's by making sure you're on track with everything you're doing. You have seven days to do a private inspection. You have your private inspection within seven days. If you have two days to respond to that private inspection to the seller, make sure it happens within two days. Um, if it's three days and you decide not to go forward with it, you could lose your deposit. Yeah. If you do it on the appraisal, if it does not appraise for the value, um, and you don't have an appraisal guarantee, you can you you get your deposit back. Um, stay on course with your responsibilities for that contract, and if you meet every one of those, um, or if it fails, and like I said, the private inspection or the appraisal, you get your deposit back. Right, and, and folks realize too, every contingency has to be met. 
right? Every could like yes. you know, like we were just talking about some HOA review contingency, which I and I that was I was digging deep in her contract and looking at it too. It was like wow, you know. So but every contingency has to be met. The, and on the condo and homeowners associations, it's very important that that, that happens. Yeah. yeah. And so, and a lot of you don't see it, and the, those documents really should be uploaded so the agent has access to them, so that the, that there's a very short delay on that that they can review that. So right. and you don't see that in there many times. No, no, so, not too much. Not, and not a lot of purchaser purchasing condos or in associations, and they don't know what they're getting involved in. They're just going through with it. Sometimes your agent doesn't get them that information. So absolutely. So again, question of the show, uh, sponsored by Root Brothers Coffee. Okay, if you could bu buy a vacation home somewhere, where would you do it? Would you do it like our next guest at South Haven? Would you do it Traverse City? Would you go off Scotland like Bill Pope? Where would you buy your vacation home at? So best answer going to get Root Brothers Coffee, a little bit of chocolate, and all kinds of fun stuff. So that's our sponsor for today. We'll see that that candy bar gets. <laughs> Listen, I, our executive producer, Dan Schuber, said, I cannot eat the candy bar, okay? I'm not going to eat it. I'll get it all over this freaking tuxedo. It's a rental, buddy. <laughs> all right. All right. So that's good for the earnest money deposit. So what's up next? City Spotlight. But, Don, wait, 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 wait. I cannot believe, I think you did this as some kind of weird Freudian slip. That's what I think. I think so, too. The fact that I know I've asked you this before about this You city. have. I know you have. I went through every single episode of this show, and I go, we didn't do that. We didn't do his hometown. So the city spotlight is Allen Park, Michigan. Woo, woo, woo. Big Allen Park, Michigan. Listen, Don's like a celebrity there. I mean, he runs the show. He was on the, the yeah. tax review board. He's going to run for mayor next year, I think. No, that's, uh, that's not happening. No? Mayor Don, sweet Don. Wait, call, call wait, 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 wait. So look. Look, we even got people Julie, in the crowd. Julie Donner. Even the pretty people in the crowd are holding up signs. Uh. Huh? <laughs> sweet Don, number one in our hearts, all right? Sweet Don Lawrence. I got some people that love me. Hey, so, thank you. We're going to have Don for mayor. <laughs> Don for mayor of, of Allen Park. That's what we're thinking. Yeah, but unfortunately, you have to live in Allen Park to vote for me. Dang it. Not out the move. Loves, not everybody loves mm -hmm. me. Uh, I'm telling you. All right, so when we're talking about Allen Park numbers, guys, this is going to show you how wicked the market is right now. How absolutely wicked the market. I mean, it's wicked. It's crazy how the numbers are. And it's going to be very obvious to you why the market's scorching hot as far as the numbers go. Remember, actives are always going to be uh, homes on the market currently. Okay, Pending is where the market kind of is. It's houses that went under contract recently. And then sold in the last 30 days are where the market was just recently. Okay, So give us the actives. Now. Give us a load. 20, there are only 20 properties on the market in Allen Park right now. Only 20. Now remember that number. I want you to think about this for a minute. Listen to this. There's 20. 20 in pending, meaning under contract, 89. So there's more than four times more yeah. houses pending. So houses are going from active to pending like that. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. They're, they're flying off the shelves. Yep. And in the last 30 days, 38 homes closed and changed hands. Wow. So, okay. So pending 989. So if you want to live next to Don Lawrence in Allen Park, you better get off your ass and get in the, on the, and check it out. You only got 20 houses. That's step all you up, got. Step up your game. You better step up your game and see if Don Lawrence, you can live by him. Now, the average sale price this is a fun number, $158,455. dollars is important. But that's pretty, pretty exact. For 1,181 square feet. So for about 1,200 square feet, you're paying about $1.60. All right, so that's, that's how where that is. So finally, we exercise the demon of Allen Park, Michigan. It's over with. I'm telling you, 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 were, you I had some kind right. of secret voodoo going I think on. So. I, think so. I looked at the list, I'm like, eh. You must be outside of your mind. We I would have thought for sure we had done that. So. I don't know. Well, if we you told do, me that today. Did we do Dearborn? Yes, we did. Okay, so make sure. We better go check. Sure. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> you checked them all, right? Yes, I did. Yes, oh, I did. God. I don't know if I remember seeing Dearborn. I don't know. So, enough of our jibber jabber and fancy clothes. We got to bring our guest in here. She's high power. But I would say before she comes on, okay, to her family, she's had her N95 mask on the entire time. All right, she has not taken it off yet. She'd probably take it off because it's hard for her to, to hear her talk. She's six feet from us. She's going to put her butt on that side of the chair. So it's all going to be good. Katie Chuber. Hey! Hey! That's what we want. Hi, guys. Thanks, Katie. Thanks we are so excited yeah. to see we you. Are. We are. I'm Especially here. because we're going to have the executive producer heckling us from the crowd. <laughs> I can see Nan Chuber on the other side of this camera. So he's probably going to start swearing at us and giving us making you know, bad gestures at us. So. <laughs> So, Katie, your big thing, and the reason we brought you on, not only do we love you and think you're awesome, but 
vacation rental properties. Mm -hmm. You and Dan have acquired one, and it's become a business slash memory maker for you, yeah? Correct. Okay. So we're going to kind of ramble through some questions. We, I, I know there are other people that are doing two things, thinking about vacation properties, and it's not a bad way to finance your vacation properties, really, is it? No, it's been it's worked out really well for us so far. Right, because like you said, you can have memories and you know right. a little bit of business from it, so it's it's cost effective for you. Right. So my first question is, what made you decide to enter the vacation uh, rental business? Well, it kind of evolved originally. We didn't set out to buy a vacation rental home. Okay. We were we planned a big vacation with Dan's family, which is roughly 20, 25 people. Oh, there's a lot of them. Yeah, there's a lot of them, and. <laughs> Took us a while to figure out a location that would be central for everybody. We have folks that are in Chicago, and it was quick to come around Lake Michigan. So uh, we landed in South Haven, like you mentioned, and we had a great time. I mean, it was we had people there. His dad was 80, and the youngest is eight. So we found something that everybody would enjoy there. So after we took that trip and we made all kinds of great memories, we thought about it. Mainly, I thought about it and said, <laughs> I think that we should buy a vacation home in South Haven. So. I started looking every day, and the only way that I could convince my husband to buy into this idea was if we were to do it as a vacation rental home yep. and try to offset some of the costs, annual costs, with rental income. Mm -hmm. So that's how we decided, and you know, we it, we went uh, three different times out there and toured about ten different homes each time, and found the one that was perfect for us at the end. Very so, cool. So how long have you owned this property? March of 2019. Hasn't been that long. Okay, so it hasn't been a little yeah, long. Been less, little, so we went yeah. through two considered you know, rental Cycles. seasons. Yeah, right, okay. there. Okay. We're in the middle of the one right now. So how long did it take you? I mean, you went out there, you saw 30 homes. Mm -hmm. How long did it, that process take to well, go through all that? And... For us, it took oh, it took a couple of years. Not the kind of clients that you guys want, <laughs> would want to have. But it's because we didn't, you know, we didn't go out there that often. Right. You know, we we were living our lives, and every once in a while, I'd accumulate a few and say, "Let's go." And on the last trip, actually, we really liked the very first property yeah. we found. We didn't, um, we didn't purchase that one, and then we found the last one, and and we're really happy with what what we landed on now. So during that two-year period, was there the process through your mind that getting used to it, or when you first went out there and looked at ten homes, you made that decision? Then we're going to make this happen at some point in the future, and that future just take, maybe took a little longer than you had hoped? It, it took, yeah, it took us, we knew that we wanted to do it, we were, okay. we were committed to doing it, but it was about finding the right property for us. Right, okay. You know, we have blended family, there's six of us, so we wanted enough bedrooms for that. He has a large family, we wanted to be able to have enough um, capacity to have additional guests. In South Haven in particular, there are um, larger homes with a number of bedrooms, so a lot of multi-generational vacations happen there, so we wanted to find it. We also needed it to be turnkey. We're, we're two and a half hours away. We both work, you know, demanding full-time jobs, so it needed to be ready. We, right. we couldn't handle a, a fixer-upper from sure. a distance. Okay. So a couple quick things. First, uh, Jeremy Morandini says he wants one, so we're going to probably connect you so you can give them all the spiel of lowdown. Okay, Jeremy. Second one is Chris Bergeron, Mrs. B, your favorite, Hi, Mrs. B. says, turn the camera so we get more Katie and less of you. <laughs> so our executive producer is going to work on that right now for us. So we'll get... Mrs. B, my go. assistant, B. also the, the, the greatest person in the world, wants more Katie and less Don. How do you like them apples? Next time you yes, see her. I, I totally agree. I, she's on to something. I mean, we want more Katie all day. That's what we want. That's what we want. So, see me. Well, let's talk about income and expenses. Like, what's, because most folks, they don't, they don't get in the rental business. So, it's a very particular rental business. So, what kind of expenses and income can you expect? Well, in addition, if you're going to have a mortgage, you'll have your mortgage payment and the tax, property taxes and insurance. One, one thing to note, though, is because it won't be a primary residence, it's, you're going to have the, the difference in the, in the tax rate for that. Um, repairs and maintenance, which you would have on in any house, your primary residence or a vacation home. Um, we, ours in particular is, is part of a PUD, so we do pay association dues, but we actually consider that a plus because our dues cover our snow removal, our lawn service, there's central irrigation throughout the whole property, and there's a community pool. So it, it's actually a bargain for us because we would have to contract someone else to do all that. So this is a one-stop shop. We don't have to worry about it. So all. what kind of cost is that? As far as Ours like... is 200 a month. Okay. Okay, okay so the exterior-wise, everything's taken care of. 
uh, grounds wise, everything is grounds taken care wise, of. Yeah, right. not the structure itself. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. right, right. Mm -hmm. That's what I meant. The grounds. Yeah. So that's a no, like okay. that's a, that's a no brainer for yeah, you because yeah, you have yeah. to be around. You can be two, three hours away. In the yeah, we're because yeah. we're not going to go out there every weekend and drive cut two grass. hours to cut the grass. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we yeah, have yeah, someone right. that can take care of that. Yeah. Right. Yes. So, um, and what about running it, and how do you do that? And we actually have a property manager that handles it, a property management company, which I would highly recommend if you don't live close by or you're not handy, which we're not super handy either, but really, because we have full-time jobs and this is just a vacation home for us, so we do have a professional management company and that's been fabulous for us. Mm -hmm. They're local. Uh, we went with a local company because we wanted to you know, build relationships in the community they have all of the you know service providers at their fingertips. They know who to go to if you know your AC breaks or, or something like that. Um, can I tell you a quick little story? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we, 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 love we love stories. Love stories. Well, we were there. Story from the road. You didn't even, we didn't even <laughs> ask for a story from the road. Out with that. First. <laughs> we were there for more a weekend, and Dan's on his way there. I was ahead of him, and so all six of us, there's six in our family, we're going to be out there, and you know we've got kids with electronics and everything. We were having a patio installed in the back. And uh, the contractor cut the line for the cable and Wi-Fi. Oh boy, it's so, horrible! So you know we have got you know twenty-year-old and yeah. twelve-year-old coming out yeah, there ready yeah, to yeah, be yeah, on yeah. their phones, yeah, and we yeah, have yeah, no yeah. Wi-Fi. Well, I called the property manager and said, "Do you know anybody?" And she knows a guy that you know, and he came out there the next day and took care of it right away. Yeah. Whereas if we would have been on the phone waiting for this cable and internet provider it might have been a couple of weeks so yeah. so anyway that's the benefit of having someone local because they yeah. know everyone in town having those connections mm -hmm. kind of like down in Allen Park right the same yeah. thing exactly yeah. Mayor I like I should have been doing the A-L-L it's going off the rails now, right. ladies and gentlemen. Are you a cheerleader? I was actually. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you do like a little routine. No, 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 no. Oh, damn it! But my daughter I thought was a I'd get one of those too, out. and Alan <laughs> bad was, a, was a Division Two, but she was Division One, and we still would yeah. watch the competitions. Very right. cool. Very cool. Well, we have a, we have an agent from one of our offices that does Alan. It's Alan Park cheerleader coach for on, you know, under high school, I middle think. school middle okay. school maybe yep. and she has them up there in the states and she's really oh, yeah. really hit they're really they're cheerleading's hardcore. intense buddy yeah. trust me just they're being hardcore. a friend of cheerleading people is intense yeah, yeah. they go yeah. head to head with yeah. carlton every year yeah very or, athletic yeah carlton yeah that was who was last week carlton. So smiley. Oh, carlton. yeah 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 all right, all right. No, a couple so, weeks ago, so now i sound like you so, yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so go back to the, the management company. What are how, what are they charging? What do they do actually do for you for that those fees? The, the fee? fee that we that we pay is um, well most companies will charge anywhere from fifteen to twenty five percent. We were able to negotiate on the lower end of that, but it's well worth. So who it. are they negotiating? I have to admit that my husband did the negotiation. Dynamite Dan DC did. executive mm -hmm. producer did yeah. the negotiating. If you need negotiations, call Dan. Right, Dan at talkingrealestate.com. I say you get that down, okay? You get that fee down, and then he goes and does it. <laughs> That's awesome. Anyway, um, what they handle, which is critical, is any of the lead flow coming in from people making inquiries. So we don't talk to any of the guests directly. We don't have that communication, or we're not in the, put in a position of having to try to negotiate a different price. They give the stated rates and they handle all of that. Um, they have a, a professional cleaner, so they handle all of the term cleans when people leave at the end of the week and it, it's ready. Any kind of maintenance request while a guest is there, they take care of that. If you know the toilet broke or something, they're they're over there again because we're over here in Detroit. Right. We can't get over there in time, so it's been a blessing. Uh, they also helped us even just get ready to have the house available on the market they give us a whole inventory of based on how many guests that it sleeves you should have this many towels as many okay. plates forks everything very detailed wow. and they gave us that list and then you know dan and i also thought back to our times that we've been on vacation what would we have appreciated mm -hmm. in a home when we came so we i mean we we've outfitted it with bikes we have scooters beach toys all that's what i was going to ask you what little special touch that mm -hmm. you just put on it uh, we, well we have beach wagon we have you know all outdoor games cornhole bocce ball, spike ball, all that kind of stuff. We, yeah. we try to have all of that there because it actually is important to try to have good reviews and ratings and, and all of that because people, if you're looking for a vacation home, you're going to look and see what prior guests have said about their So site. you do, you look at the right. reviews, do you? Oh, I always look at the reviews. Okay, yeah. okay. Cool. Always. Very cool. Yeah. So they handle advertising too? They do handle the advertising. They have 
their own website that um, that promotes our prop the properties they manage probably about 40, 50 properties in town. Yeah. Um, but they so also- So are they like the only game in town then? No, no, there's probably three or four other okay. Okay. property management companies in town. Um, they also participate with VRBO and Home Away, which are which are very, you know, well-known, um, I guess, property advertisers. Yeah, sure, and, sure, sure. And um, so a lot of folks will find their properties that way. But one tip I will have for anyone who's looking to rent a vacation home is if you know the area that you want to go to and you can find a local property manager management company, if you go through their site and rent with them, it will be less money than it is if you go through VRBO or Home Away. So well, forget that. Here's what you're gonna do. At the end of this, we're gonna put their property <laughs> website up there. You're okay. gonna to go to you're gonna to go to South Haven. Yeah, come to our. All right, go to go it. to that place. Do you guys have a special <laughs> name for it? Is there a name for it? Actually, there is. Yes, that's awesome. <laughs> it's called All In because Dan and I looked at it. Well, we like to play poker too, but yeah. we also said, you know what, we're all in on this vacation rental home. Um, we want people to have a good time. When you come there, you drop your keys. Hopefully, set your electronics down, and you're just all in on your vacation and having a good time. So, it might sound kind of corny, but that was. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah. Absolutely, that's the name of your. All in. That's yeah. the name of our cottage. You and pull that's up the way. a sign that says "All in." No, it doesn't say on the sign. Actually, I was going to go and make what the hell? We have a sign. If you go on to the Shores Management site, they name all the homes, and that's actually how um, their staff knows how to identify them all. It's not by the address. It's like oh. And they know all in is this. Right. Also, so they go, oh my God, clean up all, all in. You got to clean up. It's a throw up. All in. Jesus, and what's going on? Yeah, you usually try to pick something that is characteristic of the home. but And also, all in also means we're at the top of the list for the alphabetical hey. list. Wow, that was smart thinking. So, smart thinking. Yeah. Do you, do you go call, spell it A A L L? <laughs> we should have. <laughs> oh. You know, I got to say triple A wow. or something wow. like that. That was pit. So. That's funny. Jesus. <laughs> That's the next question I can't hey, answer. You got to think, think of those things. Um, so how'd you go about hiring this property management company versus the other two? And Well, since we, we actually vacationed three. there on a few different occasions, and so we just paid attention to, there are small signs that they put in the yard, so we paid attention to who were the most popular uh, property managers in town, and then my husband just called them, found out about rates, what were the services they provided, and we just hit it off well with with shores mm -hmm. vacation rentals and that's who we've used and we would recommend them yeah. all day long and yeah. continue that way shores mm -hmm. shores shores mm -hmm. i can confirm dan true was a shark on the phone like even for like a <laughs> little get together it's like salesman. he calls up he's selling you all day long yeah. so he is definitely definitely, that's definitely, right. definitely so a couple other questions we have a couple more for you tax benefits like how does it benefit you guys and does it benefit most people because you have will. a cpa too so you gotta have an idea yeah. Yeah. well i don't it's it can get a little bit complicated, so not without getting real technical. First of all, you should consult with your tax advisor because everyone's situation is different. Um, there is, unless real estate or you're in active rental real estate is your profession, then it will be considered a passive activity. And therefore, um, any losses that you may have from it, because you will get to depreciate a portion of the home because it's, it's, you're functioning it as a business asset also. Um, it, it could be deductible, but if it's passive, more than likely it'll, it'll be kind of held and carried over to the future and it'll offset the gain on the sale of the house. So there, is, there are benefits. For us, that isn't the primary driver of why we did it. We did it again to, you know, to make memories and, and also so that other people can share you know, in staying at the home and, and going to the beach and having a, a wonderful time. That, that was really our primary motivators. To, and for others to sh share it with others... Yeah, well, the guests that come. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. The guests that come. We, I mean, we. People you know or people you're rent, being both, rented to? Both. I mean, we've had family there. I, I've had a work team there. I did a work function there. And oh, just, okay. Is a getaway of team building type That's event. Sweet. Yeah. That's I, pretty cool. You know, I had a, a sister's weekend. Dan's had golf weekends there. So we've used it plenty that way. But really, we try to think of everything that a guest would want. To well, we were thinking about taking a talk in real estate and shooting it from somebody. <laughs> there you go. That's what we were thinking, you know. Taking this on the road. Taking it on the road. Give me off season, not just And we'll use some place of box ball and we'll talk. Yeah, I mean, right. Come on now. So, okay. speaking of off season mm -hmm. and on season and the season, you know, so when do you primarily have your rent? Is it rented and when mm -hmm. is it not? And well, when do you get spent time? In, yeah. in yeah. South Haven, because it is a beach town, you know, primarily, the peak rental season is Memorial Day to Labor Day. So, traditional Michigan summers. 
Um, we have had people come for New Year's Eve and, and they rented then, but that is the, the main time. So um, the good thing is that we can use it all the rest of the year. We, um, again, part of the negotiation with Dan is that we would leave July, which is the peak month available for renters. So he's like, Katie, that is off limits. We're not going in July. But we did go the last week of June. We actually leave this Friday and we'll be there next um, next week, all through next week. Um, with the Tuber clan. Yeah. Um, so that'll be a good time. But um, Jim Tuber going to be there? Jim Tuber is going to be there. Very nice. Jim Tuber and I. So you know, she said she had to negotiate with our executive producer, Dan Schubert. That's, that's right. It's nice. It's very nice. So, in, in a couple little bullets, mm -hmm. give us advice for people that want to turn their vacation home into a rental, too. Okay. Well, first, I mean, pick the location that you love. Um, that's the, the most important thing because even if you had no rentals, like where do you want to be and, and where do you enjoy? Um, I'd say beyond that, also pick where visitors want to go. I mean, ours is on, you know, like right here on Lake Michigan, and so that draws people from Chicago. It's only two hours away, you know, and then it's close for Metro Detroit folks to go there. You don't have to deal with I-75 traffic. Yeah. Um, we can go there just on a weekend if we want to. So. The location obviously is critical. I study the area, know what other um, kind of community uh, attractions that there are nearby. You know where we are. There you can. There's golfing. There's wineries. It's a trail town, so you can draw people that have a, a number of different hobbies. So that that is key. Also, um, study the real t real estate market. I was on Redfin and Zillow like every single day until we actually. I'm still on there all the time. Um, find professionals like you who can help you find a There home. are no professionals like us, right? <laughs> no, there are. Nobody like that. You are that. one of a kind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, you know, do your homework in terms of what your budget is and and what the rental rates are in the market so that you can figure out how much of your cost you may be covering. Um, I, that was really important for my husband to do that. And, and even in the, you know, in a very condensed season, you can command higher rents because it's such a small season as opposed to going to Orlando where it may be year round, but the rents are lower. So yeah, right. um, even, you know, in the middle of a pandemic, we're, we're actually, we had a number of cancellations early on, but then people are rebooking and we're, we are probably on pace to pretty much cover all of our costs. That's for the fantastic. whole year. That's for awesome. Year. And you still get to enjoy it all the time, exactly. make memories too. Right. So, yeah, absolutely. So far or just even with the future, what you see in the future, how, how Oh, I'm not saying the whole cost of the house. I'm saying our annual carrying costs. We're able. That's right. what we're looking yeah, 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 like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, but but up until this point, or even including August and September, whatever. Or for, what we have on the books rented yeah. right now, yeah. it will almost cover the, our 2020 expenses. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, that's absolutely. And awesome. that's what our taxes coming on yeah. and losing the you know the 18 mils too. Yeah. So it's good. Wow. Before we let you go, Katie, okay. I want to read a couple things that's to awesome. you. So Chris Wojcinski. Says Katie is so smart and pretty too. I think I want to rent their vacation home next year. So okay. I thought you'd like that. All right. Anna Denver tells, she says for a discount. Yeah, she probably is. So my aunt calls you. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Anna Denver or Ann Denver says hi from Jim Chuber. So I don't know if they're related. They're watching together. I don't know the answer well, to that. I'll pass that along. Absolutely. So people love having you. I have one, I do have a question. Okay. I'm really interested in, in this for some strange reason. Okay. Restaurants there. Are there some good restaurants? Yeah. You're talking about wineries. There must be some good restaurants. Oh, there are. And the, you know, and here's, I could talk about South Haven all day long. You don't even have enough time on the show. Yeah. But, I mean, there is a downtown there, and there's not a lot of beach towns where, like, the downtown leads you right down to the beach. But, I mean, there's ice cream shops. There's bar restaurants, farm-to-table type restaurants. Wow. Um, so the things that are local and more unique to the area than, you know, chain restaurants that we can go to anytime when we're at right. home. Nothing against them, but you can do that anytime. Right. So, Why go you know, there, right. right. And do, do you guys take credit cards? Because Dad is ready right now to sign up they for a week. <laughs> he wants to go right they now. Do take credit he cards. is ready. <laughs> He's already like, my wife would love me if I go to South Haven, oh, baby. She would, my wife. All in. All, don't all forget, in. All, all in. in. I already got that in my mind. All in, buddy. It's already tangible. You have any available right. this month, because Dad's looking in August. We don't. We have nothing available. Even if, we can't, even, even if you're a guest on the show, even if you're husband's Sorry. best man at my wedding, even like my two weddings, I should say. <laughs> this, and I said, are you practicing for your third wedding in this, in your uh, suit there? Absolutely, um, I am. Zing. So no, my, you can my find wife out loves. In the fall. My okay, wife loves you. farm to table. We've done it a couple times, and especially at a winery. And yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh. So get, so get, get their management company. Get this hooked up. I expect to see you take a video from the back of their house. I'll send you the link to the 
to our rental. Absolutely. We'll put it on our okay. back, back end of the show. So is there anything you want to add and that, um, that we might have missed that you think that the viewers would be interested in knowing? I guess just... It, I mean, in a nutshell, uh, for us, it's been one of the best decisions. You know, we're, we're, we happen to be a blended family, and this has meant us being setting aside the pandemic and eating together every day. But it's been a way for us to get away. Like, the second I drive into town, I take a deep breath, and really, I set my phone down, and we, we yeah. are outside. We're on the beach. We're taking walks, riding bikes. It has been uh, fantastic. So making lots of memories, setting traditions, and, you know, hoping that, you know, guests enjoy it at the same time, and and you know it covers our costs. So financially, it makes sense for us as well. But and and you know what? They like they always say you know they ain't making more land. So we're investing in real estate that hopefully will appreciate. And, and, yeah. and you're not making more water where you can be out exactly. of water, yeah, yeah. close to the water. Now so it makes more sense why Dan doesn't take my call sometimes on the right. weekends. Right. It makes a lot more sense now. <laughs> now I understand. Katie was so great having you. I mean, like, I like yeah, we, awesome. we pumped this up all week and last week, and it came to fruition that so you were wonderful. Pressure. You did great. It was okay. awesome. I learned a lot. I, yeah. I, this was very important. We talked before, and so thank you very much. You're I, welcome. I, I really you got yourself a client too. You got yourself right. a client. And so <laughs> our question again, folks, and like the troopers in South Haven, like my good friend Bill Polk, who's watching up in Escota. If you were going to buy a vacation property somewhere, where would you buy it in Michigan, okay? I saw somebody put Florida. We're not talking Florida. We're talking about the mitten. That's what we're talking about. So the best answer, we'll get you some Root Brothers coffee by the end of the show. Okay, I'm kind of scrolling through them now to take a look and see. But, yeah, where would you buy your vacation rental home? Just the mitten? What about up here? Well, either, yeah, okay. Harbors, I, I don't know if there's, any, I don't know if there's I, any resorts up there. There is. There's some resorts. In UP? There. Yeah, there's some places. I up to the UP. I don't know. Copper Harbor, Harbor, buddy. Uh, you you might be right. Yeah. There you go. So so hey, hey before we go any further, so I wanted to point something out we didn't talk about. We have a logo back here. I don't know if anybody saw that. What do you think of it? Give us a thumbs up if you like it or. So we have a choice between about three or, four, or about four or five. One of them, the Chuber is my executive producer, Dan Chuber. Already put the thumbs down on one, so we're not going to do that one. There's a couple other ones. Uh, Steve Markey from Markey Design uh, came up with the different logos. We'll put them out on our talking uh, real estate group. And we'll kind of give you an opportunity to make some choices and what you like, stuff like that. So let's get to the big part of the show, right? Fan, Fan of the, of the show. show. All right, here we jump already. Who is this, it? This guy has asked me a number of questions. Every now and then he says, hey, what, he had an idea for a commercial. Um, he had an idea for um, rentals, this type of rentals, vacation rentals to regular rentals. And his name is John Van Hooten. John, I hope you're watching, and we got a convert. We got a T-shirt for you. Got a T-shirt for you, buddy. Thanks for watching, and thanks for uh, always asking me questions about it. I truly appreciate it. Absolutely, I try to ask Don questions. I don't get anything for it. I don't get a yeah, T-shirt yeah. or anything. I, I try to answer you. We also want to make sure our <laughs> wonderful guest, Katie Chuber, gets a T-shirt. Okay. So here is your T-shirt. We're in South Haven, probably. All right. Be big, excited. Be excited. So Don, I'm looking back real quick to just see where folks. What, where they would stay, where they get their, their property. I got Manistee Lake, I got Cadillac, I got Leelanau, uh, Skoda, uh, Copper Harbor. So I would say our coffee, Root Brothers Coffee, goes to Janine McKay. Janine McKay, that's who I would say. She said, La, where? Leelanau, Michigan. So that's where we're going to go with. So young lady, I will, I will stop by your home at some point soon and give you this again. Root Brothers Coffee, they're local guys. They definitely uh, got all kinds of fancy brands in here and stuff. If you don't drink coffee, like I don't, even though I'm excited about I don't drink coffee, so if you want to give it away to somebody else, you can. But Root Brothers Coffee, Katie Chuber, all in. Okay? <laughs> and you know what's going to happen next, right? Let's know what you think about that coffee. Absolutely. If it's I like, I'm a coffee drinker. I want to know about it. I want to taste but it. But you're not getting any. That's I know. A, no, that's not sure. Well, it's you sponsors. Know, you got sponsors under, expect to get some action. Lock, you got that under lock. You worry about key. South Haven all in, okay? All right. All right, so sum it up for us, Don. All right, so we started off with market update. Rates are under 3% interest rates. We went over what earnest money deposit and what does that mean for you? What's the deal about it for a buyer and a seller? City Spotlight, Allen Park. Katie, great guest. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank Absolutely. you. Thank Fan you, of the show, Jan, John Van Hooten. And, and Root Brothers Coffee Root goes Brothers to Janine Coffee McKay. Sponsors. Yep, sponsors. That goes to Janine McKay for Lilo on Michigan. That's where she wants. So give it Katie Schumer. They'll finance your next one for you if you'd like. <laughs> and right. our new logo. Absolutely. Or so, a, one of them. I'm done. Really?
What? How starts? He starts. I know. Oh. Scott goes first. Well, why'd you go like this? I don't know, because it's ridiculous. <laughs> All, right. All right, let's sum this up. I'm Scott. I'm Don. And I'm Katie. And we're, we're talking real estate. estate. Have a good night.